Greetings to you in the name of God. So, somebody say Jesus. Uh, we are here today to celebrate the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need Him. And in these last days, we are following so many kinds of different directions. Uh, we're trying to find peace of mind, um, joy in our life. Um, um, uh, we're trying to get to heaven and there's so many obstacles that, that are coming our ways in so many directions. Uh, you take two steps forward and something pulls you back. Uh, we're trying to go to heaven so we find church that we might attend to that a preacher can tell us a little bit about God and lead us to God and how uh, uh, we should get there and the things we should give up in the uh, in our life and the sin. So this uh, day we come to you and uh, going to teach on the book of Revelations on uh, um, the seven churches. Uh, what has happened to the church world today? What has happened to the church world today? We know the Bible says, come out from amongst the world and be ye separate saith the Lord. What has happened to the church when you cannot find any difference from the world that's in inside the church. Uh, we can go inside the church and we see sin in the church. This is what we're going to show you in the Scripture that our Lord Jesus Christ walk, walked in the church. He walked in the synagogue. He talked to the people. He prayed. He preached out of the Word of God. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. Our way to God. He walked in the churches and the churches did not receive Him. My friend, we need to get back in church and we need to put Jesus in there or we have no church. Let's go into the churches. What happened in the book of Revelation? The book of Revelation. Praise God. We all said that um, me and Trish was uh, uh, sitting in our living room and she said um, something about the churches in the book of Revelation is coming to me. We need to talk about the churches in the book of Revelation. I said, yes, uh, there's so many different kinds of churches out there. People don't know what to do. Praise God. And so she wrote the ministers of music and our team members and she talked to Judy Lynn and uh, she told what was going to teach on about the seven churches. And Judy Lynn said, well, I was just thinking about that, that you should teach on the seven churches. Oh, praise God in the book of Revelations. Well, praise God, I know in the Bible where there's uh, out of the mouth of two or three witness, let it be established. One, two, Judy, three, uh, claiming, uh, let's talk about the churches. Praise God, the churches are in a mess. And today it's getting worse. If I don't shorten the day for the very elect, there won't be no flesh saved. Praise God, Jesus told us that. we got to grasp our church. we got to get back to the old old time religion. Get back to the altar. Cry out to God and say, Jesus save me. Jesus save me. Praise God. This sister Nan known as striking Topaz. She wrote the scriptures down of the seven churches. Praise God. The introduction here we're fixing to give. Praise God for a wonderful team member. Somebody loves Jesus. Somebody is trying to get to heaven. Somebody is trying to find a church. We're trying to find a church, my friend. Let's read what the churches do. Okay, uh, we're going to name off the introduction that Nan gave us. And let's not forget Daryl. He, he always uh, comes through for us. He's, uh, he's the one who encouraged us to get back into the ministry. I praise, uh, praise you, lift you up for that, Daryl, in the name of Jesus, because we need to be about the Father's business. Amen. Okay, uh, uh, Nan sent us over an introduction that's uh, short and sweet, and I like the way that it works. And then we'll go into the Scripture. Okay, uh, the church of Ephesus. The church that had forsaken his first love. The church of Smyrna. The church that would suffer persecution. The church of Pergamos. The church that needed to repent. The church of Tyteria. The church that had a false prophetess. The church of Sardis. The church that had fallen asleep. The church of Philadelphia. 
the church that had endured patiently. The church of Laodicea. The church with the lukewarm faith. Amen. I like that introduction. And we're fixing to get into the scriptures. But I pray that the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus would guide us through this because we don't want to say anything out of turn. This is a serious matter. You know, the churches have gone astray. They are worshiping the devil. And I'll tell you why. Because they're worshiping money. You cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. And the thing of it is, it's pitiful. Uh, they are prosperity preachers. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's about saving souls and uh, repenting and turning your life around. And you build up your treasures in heaven, as we taught last week. Plus entertainment. And they're trying to entertain people. And that's not what it is. Leave Hollywood for the entertainment. Amen? Okay, let's get into the first church, the church of Ephesus. I'm going to read each church, and then John's going to speak on the churches. Okay? Amen? Unto the angel... Okay, this is Revelations chapter 2, 1 through 7. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I, listen, in each one of these, it talks about works. Amen? And I want you to listen to that. A lot of people say you don't have to do no works. Yes, you do. you got to do God's works. You sh- most certainly do. Faith without works is dead. And he's going to repeat that again here in a little bit. Okay? I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst bear them which are evil and has tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne and has patience for my name's sake, and has labored and has not faded. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember thou for it, for whence thou hast fallen, and repent, and do your first works, or else I will come to you quickly and will remove the candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, thou hast the deeds of the Nickelodeon, which I also hate. He he hates it. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcome, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. Now, what's going on in that church? What what, what, what have you read that actually is going on in that church? Uh, uh, Was there fornication going on? Mm-hmm. But they left their first love. They, what, what it was, it was fornication, a spiritual fornication. Okay. They left Jesus, their, their love. Okay, so there's sex going on yes. in the church. Yes. Uh, so similar to nightclubs, um, um, th- this is what's going on in the church. This was this church. Yes. Uh, so we're going to find out that where the Lord had visited John by the Spirit. Uh, yes. Uh, and that spirit called his name Jesus. Uh, you'll find out as uh, we read each church here that it's Jesus talking that the Spirit of God spoke to John and it's Jesus. The Holy Ghost was Jesus that was talking to John. And he's telling each church what he does like and what he does not like. And you've got to notice in each one of these churches he speaks of work. Uh, today churches say don't do nothing you don't have to do anything all you do is believe well I'm going to show you by scriptures by the living word of God that it's more than believing not my words because I wish you didn't have to do anything I, I wouldn't care but it tells us what we should do and it's not works that we do but it's works of God that He does, that we must proclaim, and the things He does through you, and the things you should do for His name's sake. Now listen, as she goes on and read about these churches, it speaks about works all the time. And then it tells what He does not like. This is Jesus talking, and the things He does like. And let me tell you, He tells them to repent in these churches. 
Well, I want to uh, say something about that fornication. What it is, is spiritual fornication. If you read in there, they left their first love. They left God. They left their first love and, and worship idols and uh, a mixture of uh, sex and all kinds of things that was in the churches. And so he's speaking to these churches. Okay, Revelations chapter 2, 8 through 11, the church of Smyrna. Okay, and... And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things, saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, there's works again, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art, but thou art rich. And I know the blaspheming of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogues of Satan. This is the church. He's talking, he's talking to the angel of the church. You know, each church has an angel overseeing it. So he's giving these instructions to the angel of the church uh, to deliver this to the people, the, the ministers. So there is churches of Satan. Synagogues of Satan, yes. Okay. okay, fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you be uh, tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He that overcomes shall not be heard of the second death. And this brings something to my mind. Isis that beheaded all those people. Uh, uh, they were persecuted for the name of Jesus and, 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 and died. And they, they did not hurt of the second death. I'm telling you, if they'd done it for the name of Jesus, they did not hurt for the second death. Amen. This is the church of Smyrna. So see, he that has an ear, let him hear. I believe the word says we have eyes and see not. We have ears and hear not. Church, the true church, should have an ear and hear what the Spirit said unto the churches the spirit uh, and it's one spirit there and that one spirit uh, went to John to uh, tell him about this uh, that he's seen in the book of Revelation and that one spirit is Jesus speaking praise the name of God when you hear the spirit of God talk to you make sure that it's Jesus I'm going to prove by the word of God later that that spirit of God is Jesus Christ the Spirit of God is Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. Now let's go on to the next churches. Here, on this church, it says, Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Listen to Jesus. Praise God. Now, works again in this church is talking about and claiming the things that are not. Uh, praise God. Now let's go on to the next church. Number three. Okay, Pergamos. And to the angel of the church, write these things, saith he that has a sharp two-edged sword. I know your works. There's works again. And where thou dwellest, and even where Satan's seed is. And hold fast my name, that thou deny not my faith, even in those days where Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, and where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, well, because... Here, here's somebody now in the church... Yes. ...that was martyred... Yes. ...and it says, was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. He's speaking to a church and saying, where Satan dwelleth. Then they say that your father was a murderer from the beginning. He's talking about being slain here. Let's go ahead. Okay, yes, and Satan's right in the middle of all churches. I said that before. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctor of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things. Hang on, let me turn my page. Sacrifice to idols and to commit fornication. This is inside the church now. So that... Uh, thou also hold that the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate, repent, or else I will come to thee quickly and will fight against thee with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat of hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name, which no man saith 
knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. I want to say something here. Yeah. I'm going to put some notes up about Nickelodeons, Balaam, and uh, Balak. That way you can know what they were doing. And that way I'll have that on the ministry page. Amen. Anyway, uh, this was the church of, um, what was it? So uh, that was the third one. Pergamus. So what was going on there? We got sex going on in the church house, sin going on in the church house. It talks about um, them that overcome. He says, repent, you know. We got to repent. The church, the sinners that's in the church better get down to the altar and repent. We better come back to Jesus because He is the true church. If you're looking for a church, don't be in a mess of sex uh, don't be in a, me a mess of Balaam and uh, a mess with strange gods and serving strange God. You better get back to the church, uh, the church of the living God called by His name. Let's go ahead and read on. Okay, Revelations 2, 18 through 29. Uh, this is the church of Titeria. I hope I'm pronouncing these right. And unto the angel of the church of Titeria write these things, saith the Son of God, whose hath eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. I know thy works, and thy charity, which is love, and service, and faith, and patience. Here we go, works again. And thy works at last to be more than the first. Your works in the last part is more than the first. But now we're standing. I have a few things against thee. Because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants. These are children of God she's teaching. Seducing. His servants, okay? To commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her space to uh, repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Flip that page for a minute. Hey, now this is a prophetess. And uh, in fornication, we're talking. We're not talking about a nightclub. We're not talking about sinners way out there in the world. We're talking about somebody in the church, somebody that's holding the precious word of God in their hand, that's teaching and fornicating and causing people to uh, walk away, turn away from God, and say, "Come unto me, you have not sinned." Uh, these are false prophetess, and but they're taken uh, on in the church. It's a money rig thing. It's a thing going on. Today, as we live in today, and it's all about money, and they're following the ways of these churches that Jesus do not like. He does not like. And it goes on and talks about killing their children, that God will kill their children. My friend, my friend, get your family in a Bible believing church, and the Bible believing church is the Word of God, and the Word of God was with God, and was God, and is God, and that Word is named Jesus. Get yourself in a in Jesus' name, church, that preaches Jesus as you go in the front door and you hear the name of Jesus as you turn around and walk out the door. Let's go and read about some of these corrupted churches. These churches did not have the Lord Jesus. Here's Jesus talking about it. Okay, i got to finish on that one. Uh, it says, I will kill her children with the dead. And all the churches, all the churches shall know that I am He which searches the reins of the hearts and I will give to everyone according to your works. Sounds like God to me. But I say unto the rest in Titheria, as many that have not this doctrine, uh -oh. and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, mm. but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Hold fast. And he that overcomes. And keepeth my works until the end. That's what we're doing each week here. And, and what you're doing is keeping the works of God until He comes. Overcomer. Until the end, Overcomer. I will give Him power over the nations. And He shall rule with a rod of iron as vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken into shivers. And even as I receive my Father, I, and I will give Him the morning star. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. And I guess the morning star would be a morning start. Praise God. 
Isn't Jesus the bright morning star? He can give me all of Him. He wants to. I'll take the bright morning star. Let Him just shine on me. Praise God. Uh, but listen, church, take this serious. Take this serious. We're talking about churches here in the book of Revelation that are corrupted, that has sin in it, that's got more than one God. Uh, they got a mixture. They got a little Jesus on the side and then a, another strange God uh, uh, in there also. It's a mixture. And then that mixture causes sin. That mixture causes fornication. That mixture uh, will not uh, uh, be holy. That mixture will not let you live a righteous life. That uh, mixture will not let you claim Jesus as the Almighty God. It's a mixture. And we must change from that and change from what and turn to what the Lord Jesus is telling us He desires. Repent, repent, repent. Okay, Revelations 3, 1 and 6. The church of Sardis. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, saith he, with the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that liveth and art dead, but be watchful and strengthen the things that remain and that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. They have the name. Well, we got churches saying you don't have to work. And he's looking for works according to this. Right. And then remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If thou shalt, thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief in the night. And thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. For thou hast a few names, which is a few people, in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. They haven't defiled their garments. So that's something he likes. Yes, he likes the people that don't defile their garments. And he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What the Spirit says to the churches. Now listen, my friend. This Spirit that's saying this to the church, this Spirit that's named Jesus, that is saying this to the church, it's not for no certain denomination, and no church here, that church, and that church, and that church. It's for all churches. The Lord Jesus is speaking to all of these kind of churches, and He wants uh, all churches to be the same. And that same is the same Spirit. That same is the same God. That same is the same holiness. That same is the same Lord. That same is the same fire that falls on your head. Praise God. Did we go th through all the churches now? Okay, I know the, the works is works is faith without works is dead. This is what all the churches are, are leaving out. Uh, uh, he's saying, I know thy works. I know thy works. I know thy works. What works? Uh, the churches today are saying you don't have to work. You don't have to do nothing. Just sit on your seat and sing a hymn and just believe. Uh, let me tell you something, my friend. The devil is a believer. The devil is a believer. But let me tell you something. The devil better get saved. The devil better turn to Lord Jesus Christ, put some works with it, and say, I accept you as my Savior, and go to the cross. But the devil's not going to do that. Because you know why? He's just a believer. And the devils believe and they tremble. They tremble. Praise God. But be more than a believer. Jesus said, here, I know thy works. I know thy works. Amen. Hallelujah. It's hard to stop. Amen. Okay, Revelations 3, 7 through 13. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things, saith, He that is holy, and he that is true, true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth, that no man shutteth, and he that shutteth, no man openeth. I know thy works. Uh-oh. I know thy works. Work? Behold, I have set before thee an open door that no man can shut, for thou hast a little string. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. Okay, behold, I make them of synagogues of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now he's calling them synagogues of Satan yes, again. Yes, yes. 
Not the church. Right. The church. church. The church is called the synagogues of Satan. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast. No man can take thy crown. Him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go no more out. I will write upon him... The name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which come down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Praise God. Do you have an ear? Do you have an ear? Do you hear a spirit? Do you have a spirit that's saying what you should do to the churches? Praise God. He's telling the things that he don't uh, like. And he's, he's talking about works also. I know their works. Uh, my goodness. Uh, we are rewarded according to our works. But you know what? Is that it with the seven churches? we got one more. Everyone is talking about works. What kind of works? The work is turning from sin Working toward going to heaven, not you're not saved by works, uh, but faith without works is dead. Uh, work toward getting closer to knowing God. Work toward uh, reading your Bible. Work toward living right. Uh, work toward turning away from the things of this world. That kind of works. Praise God. Why do we need to work that way? Because it keeps us close to God. God, just pick up your phone and have a little talk with Jesus. Give a little works. Dial the number, J-E-S-U-S. -S. Talk to Jesus on the phone. Tell Him all about your problems. Put some work with it. And maybe your problems will be answered. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm almost shouting. Okay, Revelation chapter 3, 14 through 21. This is the Laodicean church. And this, this one really hurts my heart. They all hurt my heart, but this one really grabs a hold of me. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold nor hot. So because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. It means he will vomit, vomit you up. He, may, you make him sick to his stomach. So because they'll say it. Okay, listen. This reminds me of the prosperity preaching church. Uh, they'll say it's, I'm rich. Oh, God supplies me with all riches, 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 riches. Money, 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 money. So a seed, give $1,000, you'll get $2,000, $10,000. Pay your house off. Okay, thou sayest I'm rich and increase with goods. It gives me homes, cars, Cadillacs. I have need of nothing because the Lord supplies all my need, which he does according to his riches and glory, but not by money. Not by money. And thou knowest that thou art wretched. Listen, these people with the money and the goods and everything that they have. That's in churches today. Anybody that's got uh, putting money or anything before the Lord or things, they're poor, miserable, miserable and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. And white raiment that thou mayst be clothed. And the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And fire. anoint your eyes with eyesight that you may see. You know what that reminded me of? Tried by fire? Tried by fire, Who yes. was that in the fiery furnace? It was Jesus with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Said, wasn't they rich? Ooh, they was couldn't buy them out of that flame. Hallelujah. But there was a name Jesus that came out. They came out of them flames. That's worth more. You can be tried by fire, but you can have gold when you know Jesus Christ. Praise God. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. If, if religions do not preach repentance, they need repentance repent. and works. God's works. Do repentin God's work. Is works. Yes, yes. repentance is works because you've got to do a constant work to turn from things and uh, put things down. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door, and I will come into him. I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcome to sit down in my Father's throne. Amen? Because we're going we're to be one. We're going to be right there with Jesus when he appears. We shall be like him. How did you overcome? you got to work for it. you got to say no to adultery. you got to work for it. If you're a, a pornographer watcher and you just love to do it, you work and say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Work for it. Work for getting right. My goodness, you work for money. Praise God. We're not, we're not saved by works. But my goodness, if you put some work toward it, you get close to God. Yeah, there's one more thing I want to say. Uh, Jesus is speaking to the angel of the churches. And Satan appears in the form of angel of light. And also, so does his ministers. Of, uh, his Satan's ministers appear as a form of light, as, as they're preaching, saying they're preaching the gospel as a deception. So I'm going to read this scripture, and then I'm going to turn him loose with what he's got here. Okay, Paul talks about the angel speaking, you know, in, in the form of light that perverts the gospel. In Galatians 1, 6 through 10, Marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you to the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you. That's those angels of light that are appearing as angels of light. Some would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you other than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Oh my goodness, that's deep. And we said before and say uh, again, if any man preach other gospel unto you than you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Amen. There's a lot of men pleasers out there. In these churches. So this is what the church is supposed to do. Stick with the gospel. What gospel? There was a man that came out of heaven. His name is Jesus. That came and walked among us and taught us the gospel. Let me tell you when this man came down here on earth. Uh, his name is Jesus. And he walked to the synagogues inside the church. Church. Praise God. Can you imagine that? We're talking about God Himself walking in the church that you can actually see Him. They didn't know this. And He walked into the church and they gave Him the scroll and the teachings that was already wrote. And Jesus stood up there and He opened it up and He read these words in the synagogues. In the synagogues He uh, read these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, uh, and recover the sight uh, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, uh, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. Now this is Jesus inside of the synagogue. Oh, uh, my friend, I wish I, I could bring him here right now on Full of Grace Ministry. He's here, but I'm talking about in the flesh. Just take this mic and let him read for you. So here's what he said. Oh, praise the name of God. Praise the name of our Father. He closed the book. He gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. Now, can you imagine that? Here's Jesus reading out their scriptures and their words that was written down and everybody just looking at him. Oh, praise God. They need to take another good look and look hard and find out who this man is. Okay, it goes on to say, and he began to say unto them. Here they are, the church now, looking at Jesus. The synagogue, looking at Jesus. And he said to them, This day is the Scriptures 
fulfilled in your ears. Him that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus was down here in flesh and He started talking in the synagogues. Them that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. The mighty God was inside their church. They had a revival going on, but did not know it. They could have some healing going on. They could have some blinded eyes open. They could have the dead to raise. I'm talking about inside the church. They could have miracles being performed. They had the mighty God right there in front of them inside the synagogue. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the man that came from heaven was inside the church. And all they could do is just look at him with funny eyes. And he said, your scriptures today is fulfilled. Your scriptures today is fulfilled in your ears. Open your ears up. The scriptures are being fulfilled when Jesus walks in a church, your Bible, your scriptures are going to come alive and they're going to be fulfilled. John 8, 20, 24, 27, and 44. Oh, Sister Judy is so good putting these scriptures up. Praise God! Praise God! She's so good at it. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as He taught in the temple. Here he goes again in the temple, the church house. Like I said, I wish to goodness it would be so great if the flesh of Jesus was right here right now. Praise God. I know his spirit is all around because he's testifying of him. But if you could see him in the flesh right now, my Lord, you'd be trembling, you'd be shaking, you'd be crying, you'd be turning to the altar and say, save me, dear Lord, save me. So it goes on to say, These words spake Jesus in the treasury as He taught in the temple. And no man laid a hand on his, on Him, for His hour was not yet come. I said therefore unto you that ye... Here's what He said. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. This is Jesus talking in the temple. Ye shall die in your sins. And this is why. For if ye believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. I believe He's He. I believe He's He. Let Him walk in this temple. Let Him walk in a temple full of grace. I believe, I believe, I believe that He's He. I believe He's the Almighty God that came down and wanted to straighten the church out that thought they knew God. But when they seen God, they turned Him away. Praise God. It says you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am He. Now here's what they thought in their mind. When he said them words, you will die in your sins if you don't believe I'm he. Here's what they said. They understood not that he speak of them of the Father. Oh, Lord Jesus. They don't understand when Jesus speaks of the Father. Because their Father is not in Jesus. Their Father is not right there with them. Speaking. But they did not know it. He was actually there in flesh. And then it said, unless you believe I'm here, you're going to die in your sins. And there they was looking at their father and didn't even know him. And they turned their father away. They turned their father away. Praise God. <laughs> Ye are of your father. Here's what he tells them. This is in the temple, in the church. What would you do? What would you do if Jesus walked in, the, in your church and said these words? Uh, listen to me closely. Praise the name of our God. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Didn't Trish read about the seven churches? Had lust going on. Had sin going on. Money going on. 
corruption going on. And here's Jesus in the flesh. This is not a vision that John seen. He was actually in their temple. Actually in their temple. Oh Lord, my God, my God, my God. And the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. She read in one of the churches where they had the martyrs of the saints. Uh, he was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Anybody knows the truth? How many knows the truth will set you free? The truth will set you free. I found Jesus is the truth. He's the only way, the truth and the life. No man go unto the Father but by Him. Praise God. They had their living Father in their temple. They had the truth right there in the temple. And it goes on to say, because there is no truth in Him, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own because he was a liar from the beginning. Now their father was, they had no truth because their father was a liar. Their father says, I don't believe he's he. No. Their father says, who is that man in that temple preaching? Yeah. Their father says that. Their father, when Jesus opens the book up and reads, their father just look at him. Everybody, the eye starts looking at him. The Father. Praise God. Actually, they was going to throw him off of the cliff. They weren't after him. And uh, they was going to throw him off of the cliff, but he escaped. Praise God. He escaped for me and you that we might have life and have it more abundantly. My friend, I want to tell you. Now, Jesus walked in the temple. He came to his own, his own received him not. Oh my God. They had Jesus in the church, right there in the church. My God, if they only knew they was looking at their father, they would have had the best church dancing they could ever dance. They would have had the best deliverance they could ever uh, be delivered from. They would have turned from their idols. They would turn from the lust if they only knew their father. Praise God. Put your father in your church. Know your father's name. Call upon the name of Jesus and look your father in the eyes and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Only your father can save you. Only your father can save you. Now the true church in Acts 1 and 4 and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jer Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he ye have heard of me. Okay. Here he is telling them go to the temple again um, the, uh, with the upper room the upper room and wait for a promise and this promise is going to be of him that they heard of. Praise God. Now we're talking about it. He's getting the true church ready. He's getting the true church of what happens in a church that really believes. What happens to a church that really knows Jesus. What happens to a church that was uh, um, someone directed them to God and it was through the name of Jesus. Now in uh, Ephesians 4 and 4, here's what uh, is said. This is for the church. This is for the true church. There is one body, uh, one spirit, even are you are called into one hope of your calling. Oh, praise God. Now we know that's what's supposed to be in the church. Uh, one body, one spirit, and, and one of your calling. But in these churches that Trish read about, um, these seven churches, they had many things going on. Even other gods. Praise God. They didn't have one spirit. And they didn't even have one body. They had many bodies. Praise God. In Matthew 16, 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to His works. John did not say that. Jesus said that. It's in the book. It's in the holy book that He's teaching uh, what happens. He says He rewards every man according to his works. Reward. Your works gives you reward. Sister Judy, you're going to be rewarded. Sister Nan, you're going to be re rewarded. Brother Daryl, you're going to be rewarded. 
church that's coming in the house to lift up the name of Jesus and testifying of Jesus and doing the good works of the Lord, you're going to be rewarded. It says you will. He rewards every man according to his works. John 14 and 10. But here's what it says. Uh, Believeth th- This was a question he's asking. This is Jesus. Jesus is asking this question. Believe it not that I am in the Father? It's a question. Now he's asking you that question. Believe it though not that I'm in the Father? In the Father. In the Father. That's a question. And the Father in me? Question. Question. He's asking you that. Do you believe that he's in the Father? And the Father's in him? Praise God. Look how that goes backwards and forth. Listen. Believe it not that I'm in the Father, you can go back all the way to Genesis. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the Father. He was in the mighty God. Then you come down and He's saying, and the Father in me, oh, that'll take you all the way back to baby Jesus in the manger where Emmanuel was born. The Father in Him. Now He's asking you the question, do you believe that? I believe it. I believe that every man be a lie and God be true. I believe it. I believe it. Praise God. And here's what he goes on to say. The words that I speak. This is Jesus talking. The words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Okay, he told where the Father is. It dwelleth in him. He's the temple of God. Praise God. Dwelleth in Him. Praise God. The Father dwelleth in Him. And He said, these words are not mine. Listen to the voice of your Father. And when you hear Jesus speaking, He said, they're not His words. It's the Father's. Do you want to listen to your Father today? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you want to hear your Father today? Oh, Father, Lord God Almighty, let us hear your words today. God is in Jesus. Jesus. Sweet name of Jesus. These words that I speak are not mine, but Him that sent me. We're hearing the voice of God. Have an ear and listen. Praise God. And then he goes on to say, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. John 14 and 11. Believe me. Get this. You really need this. This is what the church is supposed to do. All these seven churches need what I'm, uh, that Jesus is saying right here. This is the word of God. Jesus is that word. He said, believe me that I am in the Father. And the Father in me. Now he said, believe him. Do you believe Jesus? Let every man be a lie and God be true. Do you believe what Jesus said? He's in the Father and the Father in him. Well, he said, believe him. I'm going to believe Him. He's my Savior. He's the one that died for me. He shed His precious blood that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, here's what He says. If you can't get it together, you can't just just like uh, these churches, they say, we don't understand your speech about the Father. We just don't understand your speech. Here's what He says. He says, believe that He's in me or else... He gives the final answer right here. If you can't believe the Father's in Him and He's in the Father, He said, believe me. If you can't get it right about the Father and Son, He said, believe me for thy very work's sake. Are you trying to get to heaven? Are you working? Are you knocking and seeking? And said, Lord, I want to make it there. And here's what he says. If you cannot believe this about him being in the Father and the Father in him, he said, believe me, single, 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. My Father, my Lord, and my God. That's in the name of Jesus. I believe what you said. You said it. I believe it. And it's so. You said it. I believe it. And it's so. You said it. I believe it. And it's so. Let every man be a lie and God be true. Jesus taught in the synagogue. Of Nazarene, Luke 4, 18, 21. Here's what Jesus said in John uh, um, 10, 27. Uh, Are you ready for this? Don't you love Jesus? Don't you want to be in a church that has power in it? Don't you want to be a tr- in a church that's not like the seven churches in the um, book of Revelation that He was displeased in so many of these churches? Here's what he says in 1027 in John. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And we just read what Jesus told us to believe in. And he said, my sheep, I'm his sheep. Are you the sheep of Jesus? Are you the sheep of Jesus? Okay. Okay. We're reading now the Bible here. Is that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and I, and they follow me. Trying to get to God. You're trying to know your Father. You're trying to make it to heaven. Follow Jesus. And if you can't get it right, can't get it right about the Father and Son, He said, me, 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 Jesus. Just believe me for your very work's sake. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. We're talking about the way the true church ought to do. The true church ought to be in the name. The true church needs to do what Jesus says. The true church don't change the gospel. The true church keeps the gospel. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For if he that cometh preaching another Jesus. Oh my God, did I hear him say another Jesus. Are y'all ready for this? Now these churches that's living in all types of sin, they are play, um, proclaiming Jesus. Well, now here Jesus, the true Jesus, is saying these words. For uh, through Paul, Paul is saying this about who Jesus really is. For if he that cometh preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached. And what did they preach? I think it was Paul said, I know nothing at all but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He only knew Jesus. Only knew Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit. Many spirits are going on in the churches. There must be one Spirit of the living God. And that Spirit's got to be Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you that here in just a little bit. Which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with Him. Galatians 1 and 7. It goes on and says this, Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel? It's all about Jesus Christ. And and there's another Jesus Paul is claiming here. And they pervert the gospel of Christ, preaching other doctrines. (laughs) They don't tell you that He's God Almighty coming down from heaven in these churches. Uh, uh, Baptism, uh, death, burial, and resurrection is Jesus Christ. Okay. And 2 Corinthians 11, 13, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. There's your work again, and they're doing all kinds of deceitful work. Oh, Lord God Almighty. And transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Oh, my goodness. These are deceitful workers. And it's also, it talks about another Jesus Paul talked about. 
False apostles. Yeah, they carry the name of Jesus, but not the name of God. They don't even believe He is the name of God. Praise God. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. They don't even marvel at this. Satan is good about turning Jesus into nobody. He wants to make the church think he's a junior. He's just sit back and look at him. Satan is good at transforming the Word of Jesus Christ. My friend, you have no church until you put Jesus way up on the pedestal and up on the throne and in the midst of God in the book of Revelation. One sets up on that throne and His name is Jesus Praise God. But you won't hear that in some churches. They think many is up there on that throne. They think several's up there side by side. They think more than one body is up there. Praise God. And the Word of God reads as one body and one spirit. God is a spirit. But they'll tell you there's many by, uh, bodies up there and they're side by side. And it says one sits upon the throne and His name is Jesus. Therefore... It is no great thing if his ministers also transform as the ministers of, of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. They're going to get paid for what they're doing. They're going to get paid for um, changing the Word of God. They're going to get paid for stripping the Lord Jesus Christ down to nothing, putting crowns of thorns on Him, spitting on Him, putting Him on a cross, and, and saying He's not who He claims to be. He's everything, church. He's everything. Acts 2 and 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, this is in Acts. And we all know what uh, Acts did. They baptized in the name of Jesus. He added to the church daily. Oh, Lord God, take us back to the true church. Take us to the true church. In Romans 8 and 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Do you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you? If you want to know if anybody has the Spirit of God dwelling in them, let me go ahead and finish this. This is very important. And listen closely. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ. That one Spirit that says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. That Spirit that talked to um, John about the revelation about the seven churches that was corrupted. That one Spirit is Jesus. And to have the Spirit of God in you, you better have Christ in you. Because what did Jesus say? The Father in me and I am in He. Oh God. And He also says, and I'll be in you. Hallelujah. He came on the day of Pentecost. Jesus Christ's Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. Praise God. James 2, 17 and 18. Even so faith, it hath not works, it is dead being alone. Now, then we read about the seven churches and every one about the seven churches said, work, 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 work. We got churches today. You don't do nothing. You don't do nothing. Well, if I don't have to do nothing, I might as well lay this down. How's anybody going to hear the Word? How's anybody going to be told? He, he speaks through preachers. He speaks to His church. He speaks through you. Work. That's the kind of work He's talking about. So if, 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 if even so faith, if it hath not worked, it is dead. Who is your uh, faith? Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We must do the work He's called us to do. Uh, it's dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. It says, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by thy works. They go hand in hand. 
you got to have faith with works and it works with faith. Uh, you can't be, I can't be doing this and not believing in what I'm doing. It's working for nothing. And then if I have faith and I do nothing, where's the work set that I'm believing in? Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. John chapter 3, 3 and 5. Praise God. Here's Jesus talking to a man in the church. <coughs> Nicodemus. Here, here he is in the flesh. Now we done read where he went through the temples and he preached and he taught and they, they didn't accept the God they was worshiping. Here he is talking to one of the main men in church now called Nicodemus. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again. He's telling a church-going person to be born again. He's telling a man that worships God that he shall be born again. But this man didn't know who Jesus was. So Jesus has to tell all churches, born again, be in His name. Praise God. Here's what He tells him to do. Nicodemus couldn't understand this, so Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This is a man, church-going man. He said he has to be done by water and by spirit. Now, how does the church supposed to do? Jesus is trying his best to straighten the church out. He's telling this person he's got to be born again by water and by spirit or he cannot enter in the kingdom of heaven. Now let's go to Mark 16, 16. He that believeth Y'all ready for this? Because this is about water. Uh, this is about water. He that believeth. Do you believe? Do you believe Jesus is your Savior? Do you believe? Are you a believer? Do you believe that believing can save you? All you have to do is believe? Sure you do. Let's see. Let's see what we need to do after we believe. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be damned, he that believeth not. Now, it said this in the Bible. Read it for yourself. we got churches today. We'll tell you you do not have to be baptized. That's just something if you just want to do. Now, we just read in James 2, 17 and 18, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, it is dead being alone. Now here he is saying in Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized, you believe and there's your works. You're being baptized. Believe, works. Believe, works. And it's not working something you're doing. It's doing what Jesus you believe in. in. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then react upon it. That's faith with works. And it says you shall be saved. It's the Bible. It's the Bible. But people are corrupting the Word of God. And they're not teaching the same doctrines as it said. Oh, praise God. So here's what the doctrine says. Be baptized. Believe and be baptized. You shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be down. My sin is this. Believing equals faith. And baptized is, is a work. But believing without works is dead because it's alone. You're doing it alone. We're talking about how God wants to set the church up, what we should do in the church. Believe who Jesus is. Believe on this uh, mighty man, this uh, man named Jesus. Praise God. Lord Jesus. Now, if you have the right kind of church, if you have the church that has Jesus in it, 
if you got the church that uh, that you would let him walk into your synagogue instead of just looking at him with strange eyes and let him preach and you will have a revival. This is what kind of church you will have. You will have Jesus at your pulpit and he will be telling you to turn away from sin. Uh, you will be having eyes open. You will have uh, uh, the dead being raised. You will have the gift of the Holy Ghost and with tongues of fire. This is the, what happens in His church. You will have soul winning on fishers of men. You would have laying on the hands and the sick they shall recover. You can cast out devils in the name of Jesus. This is a church I want to get in. You can uh, cast out devils in the name of Jesus. By that name you can move mountains. This is the church I want to be in. Um, this is the kind of church that I desire. You can drink any deadly thing. It won't harm you. Why? You've got a God named Jesus in that church. Praise God. He's in the midst of two or three. That's the kind of church I want to be in. Just let there be two people there and me and Jesus is there. I want to be in that church. His church is called by His name. His church is the holy. His church is without spot and wrinkle. His church is overcomers. His church is righteousness. His church is blood bought. His church is the redeemed. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Get in the true church. Get in the Jesus name church. Be baptized and be saved. Praise God. Turn away from all the wickedness. There's so many churches out there. But He told us what He did like and did not like. He knew their works. And He knew their works were no good. He talked about it. Then He tells us what we should do. What we should work forward. We need to work forward in our high calling. We need to work forward in going to Jesus at the cross. We need to humble ourselves and get down on our knees and pray. I want to be in a powerful church. I want to be in a church that's powerful, filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire sitting on their heads. I want to be where Jesus opens the Scriptures up and I don't look at Him funny. I walk up there and shake His hand. I want to shake that God hand. I want him to lay his hand on me because I know I'll be made whole. Praise the name of our God. Oh sweet Jesus. We must go. I didn't mean for it to be this long. But when you get in the Word, it's deep. It's deep. There's searching. You're working for what you're searching for. It says seek and knock and you shall find. Every time I search the Scriptures, I find Jesus Every time I search the Scriptures, I find my God. I find Him in a name. I find Him in my church. And I know that He wants you to turn away from sin. Praise God. Praise God. The true church.